sucks blood. Wouldn't, wouldn't it just be better because it won't take as much out and it won't need much of a, like, you don't have to fix it that much. If you kind of cut your finger up, uh, you have to fix well, it. Well, kind of yeah, the thing is, have you ever given blood or had blood taken for Not something? Yet. Kind of okay. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I mean, they donate, but like they had to draw some to do a test or anything. Veins will heal up pretty quickly. And you're talking about just a little soul. They're not cutting it. They're making oh, just a little pin there, kind of like when they draw blood. So, yeah. But the thing to keep in mind about a leech, leeches inject something called pyridine, and it's uh, uh, an anticoagulant. So after the leech gets its fill and drops off, what's it going to continue to do? Where it gets it? Lancet, yeah, you put a little pressure on it, you know, after a little bit, stop. So that could actually be pretty dangerous. Yeah, but you're right, they don't take much. That means a lot of them put several on them. unfortunate because there are surgeons who feel like it's better because you get more blood quicker and you oh. bring on syncope then they pass out quicker. <laughs> but depending on your practitioner, Benjamin Rush is a very popular doctor at this time period. He believes in what they term heroic therapies. More is better. <laughs> so he preferred to take a quart and more, which is of course quite dangerous. Uh, most blood lettings are, you know, around a pint or less. Um, but he wanted to take a court, and he would often bleed from an artery because you get that blood problem. Mm -hmm. oh, so, yeah, usually you want to avoid that, and you look in doctor's manuals at the time period, they will say, you know, use it, try to get one of the main veins here near the elbow, but, but be careful not to puncture an artery. So, you know, most would avoid that, but the same way. My dad had it done as a child, and his was on his back. You could still see the scars as he was older. Six scars on his back. So. Okay. Yeah. So they're uh, doing things sometimes seem odd to us today, but they're doing them because they seem to get some benefit from them. Uh, for instance, this is one that's <laughs> I kind of sort of know where they're coming from with it, but still, just, uh, I think it's probably the best thing to do. This is a blistering knife. Now, say you had been out on a cold, wet day, your clothing just been soaked to the skin. Then a few days later, you've got some congestion and cough. They want to get that stuff out. So they want to give you some medicines called expectant, which have a cough, some of the phenomenon. But they think the problem, and why you've got that fluid in there, is because the wet clothing has prevented what they call the insensible perspiration. The kind of sweat and the gases and the fluids that come out of the pores, whether you know it or not, you don't realize it. They think that's been blocked. That's why you got logical. It's not what's going on, but that's, that's what they're thinking. So they want to get the fluid out. So they give you those expectants. You might make teas, uh, things like sage and snake root, and that will get rid of some urine, get rid of some sweat. But when that's not enough, they heat up that iron and raise therapeutic blisters on the chest and on the Owie. back and open those up and that will supply the one with critical evacuation so they feel much better. Yeah, if you've ever heard of mustard plasters, mm -hmm. most of us haven't experienced it, but if you have heard of it, these were usually strong enough to blister the skin. So they're, they're best if you want to get that stuff out. So, um, yeah, the things they will do, like I said, sometimes Based on their misunderstandings of what's going on, it <laughs> seemed to make sense, but we, nowadays we know better. Yeah. 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 
traffic drugs going on. We do not have any statistics. Just to and now there will be plenty of people who will tell you of this, uh, but we don't have any statistics. A lot of times what they're doing is taking statistics from the Civil War, which were medical practices, conditions were very similar, and you can extrapolate that. But uh, even and it's like even with modern ones, it really depends on where you get hit and how soon you get hit. Um, they're not going to have anybody usually in the field to do triage. You don't have corpsmen out there who get to them immediately. The surgeon you might have a surgeon to make to help him, you might not. But keep in mind when in battle, it's not this set piece where, oh, we'll meet you over there and we'll fight. People have this odd notion about that. You know, that's that's not typically what happens. You got two armies maneuvering, trying to play cat and mouse, trying to catch one side or the other at a disadvantage, which means they're usually on the move. Everything's on wagons, they're all strung out. When the engagement does happen, the surgeon, Lord knows where he's going to be in the, in the process. He will get there when he can and try to deal with them. But they're going to try to have to set up things very haphazard. And uh, sometimes it might be days after an engagement before the surgeon's able to get to some of these memories. So that's why I hesitate to give you any statistics. Based on Civil War era, Medicine, which again is, is very similar, but, yeah, um, let's say for an amputation. Fingers and toes, extremities, maybe a 3% fatality. Which you get major limbs, you get close to the body, somewhere closer to 40 or 60%. So torso wounds, death wounds, and what they hit. But keep in mind they are puncture wounds, and puncture wounds are really dangerous because you open up the body. It's one of the things that limits their ability to do internal surgery. They have some knowledge of the body, but as soon as you open up the body, you introduce infection. And what do they not have to fight that infection? Antibiotics. That's 20th century. You know, they will do some topical disinfectants, things like vinegar, alcohol, turpentine, or sometimes used, but they're just topical. So once something's gotten in the system, it's just really good. Yeah. Like we wish I could give you a yeah. firmer answer. Yeah, we're done. Just, we've been there, done that. We're still alive. Was, was there a bunch of things and stuff? Because I know so in the Civil War, like when so somebody got hit in the arm, it's still coming. Forget about the A lot of that, again, depends on the nature of the wound. Um, they will amputate. So I said, no, 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 no. We don't usually go into a lot of detail because people think that's all they get is cut things off. And that's not, that's not even true in the Civil War. They deal most of the sickness. More men die from disease than battle wounds then. But everybody's got in their mind the gory picture because that's what we like. Um, so you do have to sometimes remove limbs, just like they have to do today when they can't fix or repair something. But um, the thing to keep in mind is that for this war, as the war progresses, they will do fewer amputations because they realize in cases where they've been taught that this is when you should, you didn't necessarily have to, so watch and wait, see if it's necessary. Now, if bone is completely shattered, they can't repair it. Yeah, there's no point in waiting. Remove it, try to preempt any infection, and, and, and hope the guy survives. Um, in the Civil War, remember, the armies are huge. Prior to the city, okay, a lot of times people will talk about, oh, the rifle musket makes so much more damage. And the musket bullet is a big chunk of metal. It hits a close range, doesn't matter whether it's from a smooth bore, whether it's from a rifle, it's going to destroy tissue. In the Napoleonic Wars, which are the next series of wars after this, when Napoleon's trying to conquer Europe, lots of amputations because the battles were huge. 50,000 men on a single side in some of the bigger battles in Europe. There aren't enough medical personnel to meet the need. You're going to have to start removing stuff as quick as you can, try to stop the bleeding, trying to save lives. You don't have the luxury of time to try to save them. Civil War, same issue. We've got some of these huge armies engaged in and you're by, you know, forced by circumstances. But remember, throughout history, in any army, disease is going to kill a lot more of these men than wounds. So, um, yeah, we always focus on the, you know, the, the blood and the guts, but it's, it's really things like dysentery, it's the diarrhea. Those are the things that aren't so glamorous that are killing these men. And I think that's an important point that people understand. Pretty uniforms, patriotic songs, don't make war any prettier. It's ugly, nasty business. It always has been.
sucking oxygen in front. So you get a good burn all your material. So it doesn't make any difference what they started, what the weather is going to affect my uh, Yeah. What you're getting for food is salt beef, salt pork, salt fish. You're getting dried beans, peas, rice. Uh, you're getting a pound of hard bread. Uh, and uh, so the best way to cook all that is throw it in a bucket and boil it for a couple of hours. And what they would do is at about noon, one guy in each tent would collect all the food, bring it over here, and he would cook for about two hours. And then they'd take it back to the camp or back to their tent and they'd have their one meal a day that had been promised when you enlisted, if you were lucky. Because there were days you may not be in, but you were promised one meal a day. Now, if you wanted to eat anything, say at 8 o'clock at night or 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, I'm looking around, you can see that uh, Don down there has got a sack on his left side. It's called a haversack. So the soldiers would put whatever they wanted to eat later in the day in their haversack and pull it around. So that would tell what you eat and how you would eat. And again, the grills in front would have been for the occasional time that you got. Uh, fresh meat, you would have set those on the brick and uh, you would have, would have barbecued your, your stuff just like you did uh, the, uh, the, the hamburgers today. Now, there's one other thing, ladies, I was question for you guys, is occasionally they didn't give you a pound of hard bread, but they gave you a pound of flour. So my question is, you've got one cooking utensil, and that's your pot, and that's going to be full of beef and meat and, and, and vegetables. So how are you going to fix your bread? Well, you could put it on the top end of a stick. Flour and water and mess and put it in a stick and hold it on the fire. Yeah, right? Yeah. All right. Well, there were a couple ways that they would actually fix the bread. One is you're going to be using bricks like this to keep your pot off of that fire so you don't burn a hole in it. Well, they're going to get very hot. So what they would do is they would roll out the dough, lay the dough on the bricks, and they would create it. Uh, they call that. A fire cake. Call that pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now another thing that they might do is they take and make a dough ball. And they throw the dough ball down in the ashes. And they would cook it in the ashes. When it was done, they'd take it out and blow the ashes off. And they would call that a How about fire, fire cake. <laughs> <laughs> you were close both times, <laughs> So that was that was those were a couple of ways that they would actually make bread uh, if they only done it. So, any questions about what you uh, would eat or how you would have prepared it? Did they get scurvy a lot? You know? Scurvy? Of course, the treatment for scurvy would be citrus. Right, fruits. Did they were able to? Well, down south, they should have been citrus fruits. Though. Yeah, they were vegetables. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah you're getting your dry, your, your vegetable. Mm. If you were getting food. Now, you know, scurvy was a real problem on the sea. Right. They didn't have